Oh man, it's weird things that you find around here. I think these things are just like a, a mean one. I think it's one of them, if they bite you, that's gonna hurt. It's got a hard shell. He ain't happy. Look at the eggs. I wonder if these are centipede eggs. It's like redneck caviar. You think? There ain't no way in the world I'm touching that thing. Can I pet you? Can I pet you? Oh, that thing's hard. You bite? You bite? Oh! All right, gotta go. Well, welcome back. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna have some more bee fun. That's what we do here on Yappy Bee Man Channel. We play with bees. I get busy, you get busy, everybody gets busy. And then one day, plants start blooming, the flow comes on, everything just goes real nice and happy. And you forgot that it's been about, what, two weeks since you uh, checked your hives. And then one day you walk out in the yard and there's a cloud of bees flying around. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to check my hives. You go in your beehives and you start looking and you realize there's these little peanut looking things hanging down everywhere. There's three or four, one frame, seven or eight on another. And before you know it, you got 25 of these little queen cells all over your hive because they exploded on you and you didn't even know it. Well, all of a sudden, oh, about like clockwork, seven, eight days later, sometimes six, sometimes nine, but it's a couple days later, there's another cloud of bees hanging in your yard. Now you got five or six hives, maybe 20, and you don't know where they come from. And you think, well, there's another hive that done swarm, but I done checked them when my first one swarmed because it, you know, and I didn't find no queen cells. Well, what happened? This may be in one of them fancy books that I ain't never read, but I'm gonna tell you my theory. And I hope you're listening, because this is important. Can you see me better now? Good. What you're gonna find in that beehive is number one and number two are feed frames. Number three, four, five, six, and seven, most generally, in a hive that's built out and rocking. I'm not talking that nuke you put in there last week. But 9 and 10 are feed frames. They put the feed on the outer side so that they have insulation on their hive. They're insulating a nest. The center is the nest. That's the, the brood area. That's where the babies are at. So they insulate it with food. Pollen, nectar, slash honey. Now let's get back to my theory. You pull out number 3 and there's queen cells on it. Let's say you go to number four, but there's not any. But number five has got queen cells. And number six is good, but number seven has got three or four queen cells on it. Now, here's the thing. When a virgin queen comes out of her little cell, she does not have much, if any, pheromone. I mean, it's so minute that they have to do the, make a little sound to find another queen that just hatched. That pipping, piping, depending on what part of the country you're in, that's how they find each other. That queen over on number three, now she comes out, and she goes and she does her little thing by, by trying to eliminate the other queen cells. And it works. But when she's out, all of her little workers around her on frame three, they say, well, thank you, Jesus, we got a queen. So they're very loyal to her, and they feed her and they clean her, but unbeknownst to them because of no pheromone the queen on five she hatches out oh but then don't forget number seven they hatch out now in theory we have three queens in this hive now walking around checking things out they could be doing me 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 looking for another one but now all of a sudden the ones over on seven say, hang on a minute, I hear there's another queen, I want to protect my queen. So they let off the pheromone or give the signal, they ring the bell. I mean, I don't know, They maybe they phone a friend. But they kick off a swarm and they start boiling out again. This is where a cast swarm comes from, after swarm that we hear about, right? And all of a sudden, it's, you've got all these bees in your yard again and you're freaking out going, oh my God, I got another swarm. They just swarmed the other day. But they go off and they're flying around and they land up in a tree. You go up there with your little box and you shake them in there. 
and you get all of them in there, but lo and behold, you didn't know it. There's two or three queens in there. There could be more. How is this possible? It's not in the ABCs and 123s of beekeeping, that 100-year-old book that's been out there. They didn't write about that. Ask JP the Bee Man and Sha Wee, beekeeper of the swamp. JP the Bee Man did one just a few days ago that he caged four virgin queens. So now you've got a swarm hanging in the tree. It's got a couple of queens in it. Now that's going to be its whole other problem. But you've got to learn how to find queens in, in your swarms. And don't ever give up on that first one. If I find a hive that, that just swarmed, I know I'm going to be in that hive because I'm going to go find out how many queen cells are in it. You have to make a decision. How good of a beekeeper are you? How confident of a beekeeper are you? Because at the end of the day, I, me, Yappy Bee Man, the guy that's making the video, I will only leave two queen cells in a hive. And I will only leave two queen cells on the same frame. So that way when one comes out, it will have the greatest chance to destroy the other. That being said, I'm not here to teach you how to find them and how to all this other stuff. This is a um, brain juices. Remember, we're motivating your brain juices. So, if you miss one, this is what you end up with. After swarms. I got everything ready, so we're fixing to shake a swarm. Let's get to it. So there she is, guys and girls. Now there's probably... We're going to go on the conservative side and say about two and a half pounds of bees up there. Now because, you see, this is one of those fancy cedar conifer trees, they may be puffed out a little bit because of how the little branch work goes, but I'm going to say for the most part, yeah, conservative two and a half. But we're going to shake them in. I'm going to bring them all down at one time, and we're going to actually just set them right in front of the hive and let them figure it out. All right. I don't want, if I shake this, I don't want any chance of losing any bees, so I put a tarp down all across the junk in my truck <laughs> junk in my truck truck in my junk but I put that down so that way I don't lose any falling down in there and potentially a queen always just think about what's going on around you and uh, I highly advise don't ever stand on your ladder on a ladder rack on your truck this is definitely not safe but let's see what we can do as far as shaking these bad boys and girls into a box and then we're gonna put the lid right back on it we're gonna take all this stuff back down there and Give them a thump, pour them in the box, and let them settle for a minute and see what happens. All right? Now see, that's why I put that down there. Cause there's a bunch of bees down there and we still got some airborne but man we got the bulk of them so we're going to turn around let's get let's get this thing down here and let's go find us a queen 